Hello, my name is Nigel Palmer and I'm the author of the book The Regenerative Grower's Guide to Garden Amendments. I thought I'd spend a brief moment discussing the toolbox that I use. These are mostly mineral amendments that I've been using for the late summer. Let's see what we got. So this is a fermented pear juice, fermented blueberry juice, fermented peach juice, and uh, I also have grape, fermented grapes. I also have fermented apples. First of all, this is what I like to feed my pears, peaches, blueberries, apples, and grapes on a regular basis. And I'll augment these with some of the vinegar extractions to get specific minerals that I want to influence phases of growth of those fruits. When I did analysis on these fermented plant juices, the first thing that came to light was the high amounts of trace minerals that are in these. And this made it clear to me two things. One, why it's so important to feed your blueberries, fermented blueberry juice, but also why it's so important to eat these fruits. Uh, fermented plant juice of nettle, it's an old favorite. Fermented plant juice of sassafras, that's a really nice one. Fermented plant juice of carrot tops. So these are three fermented plant juices that not only provide a broad spectrum of minerals, but they provide a lot of them. These are uh, a go-to general fermented plant juice that I'll pick throughout the growing season to augment photosynthesis efficiency, for instance. Some of the minerals needed for photosynthesis efficiency are iron, manganese, magnesium, and phosphorus. Well, sassafras is just a winner in that regard and it has a high concentration of them. So when I'm thinking about photosynthesis efficiency, when I'm trying to feed my lettuce, for instance, or my cabbage, or my Brussels sprouts, which essentially aren't flowering and fruiting, the sassafras or the nettle of the carrot tops are our go-to. Sassafras is really interesting in another way. When you go into the woods and you actually find her sassafrasness growing in the woods, you'll often find that she is very low in the stratus of the woods and thus has not an awful lot of sunlight. And so her photosynthesis efficiency must be very high in order for her to be able to thrive in the low stratus, the, the, uh, the first 10, 20 feet of a otherwise dense forest of hardwoods and, and, and other plant life. And so intuitively you'd think, wow, that plant must be pretty good at photosynthesizing. And this gives a great example of using the plants in your surrounding and identifying characteristics of those plants that can be used to make fermented plant juice and facilitate those characteristics in other plants. So what do we have here? Eggshells, vinegar extracted eggshells, vinegar extracted oyster shells, vinegar extracted quack grass. The residues of the fermented plant juice of quack grass were then extracted using a vinegar and vinegar extracted cow bones. The nice thing about these bones and shells and the vinegar extraction is it leaches out very high amounts of things like phosphorus and calcium. Phosphorus and calcium are very important for facilitating phases of development of plants, specifically those that go through a flowering and a fruiting phase. Phosphorus is recognized as a mineral that is needed in the flowering phase of plant development. By using a vinegar extraction like cow bones, which has a very high phosphorus content in it, you can actually facilitate that flowering phase of the plant. You can bring it on. By providing a foliar spray of vinegar extracted cow bones, I've enabled plants to flower. And also along this line is calcium. Calcium is needed in plants when they're fruiting. And by using an oyster shell or an eggshell vinegar extraction, you can provide the plants with those calcium needs in order to facilitate the calcium requirements of fruiting. 
calcium is not moved very well through the flow and pathway. When you foliar spray, you're putting nutrients on the leaf of a plant, which gets into the flow and pathway, which flows nutrients and plant sap throughout the plant to the sinks from the leaf. The sinks being the new shoots, the fruits and seeds, the roots, and the root exudates. But it will do so. And so sometimes I'll use these products that uh, are high in calcium during the fruiting phase as a drench to get those liquids and those calciums into the soil solution so that they can be absorbed through the xylem pathway of the plant. I encourage you to experiment with both methodologies of providing your plant calcium during fruiting with uh, some of these products. The analysis of most of these products, if not all of them, are available on my website or in the appendix of my book. And, and so you can see the analysis of 18 different minerals of many of these things yourself and use that as a guide to help nurture your plant through different phases of influence. Well, I hope you found this video useful and I hope that it will help you to select plants to ferment as you go forward. Until next time.